right, folks, I am tentatively at it again. Um, no microphone today, that didn't survive, unfortunately. So I hope the sound's okay. I'm back on the Jubilee River, fishing an area I've never fished before. Um, don't know what to say about that really. <laughs> Yeah, fishing area I've never fished before in, in, the, in the hope of perhaps catching a few skimmers. Um, and perhaps a few different species, a few perch, whatever. Got a big bed of weed actually, it runs out to about five metres. And then, then it kind of shelves off down to it's probably about 12 foot. Um, it feels like I should be a little bit more cautious today. I, I, when I was fishing down there the other day, I knew there was loads of fish there, but here, not so sure. There, there, there have been a few fish topping and stuff. I've got the underwater camera out there already, rolling, and what I'm gonna do is put in some ground bait. I'm going to... Be, be a little bit more cautious today. The ground bait is going to sort of break up halfway down, I hope, and sort of spread out a little bit more. It's just a fishing a little bit more subtle than uh, than I was the other day. Got loads of pinkies in the ground bait. The ground bait's a lighter mix than I was using the other day. I'm just going to make some balls. I'm going to put about five in, I think. About the size of a tennis ball. And I'll probably squeeze them like some hard and some soft. The way I've got the underwater camera, it's sort of facing up and out. So we'll see how that works. So that first ball was fairly hard. This one's going to be fairly hard. I'm going to stick it out the underwater camera. There seemed to be a moderate amount of flow actually. Plopping these kind of straight out in front of me. I'm expecting to travel about 50 centimeters or so before we hit the bottom. And then these lighter ones, I'm going to do three fairly lightly squeezed ones that should sort of burst up in the water. And that I reckon will, will spread over. Uh, Oh, at least a meter of bottom. That'll give me a little sort of um, area to run my float through. Don't really know what to expect. It's bloody humid today, and it's a lot sunnier than I thought it was going to be. I've never fished this bit before. Well, I, have, uh, I did actually have a little go in the winter once, but that's not. It's not really going to tell me much summer fishing. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't really know what I'm, I'm going to feel my way in. Blowing it quite a lot. This one third upstream. Ugh. At the moment, all I've got set up is a gram and a half rig, Olivet rig. Um, I was sort of thinking about fishing a whip line just off the uh, just off the drop off. 
but I'm not going to set that up yet. I'm going to fish this ground bait line and then just loose feed a bit of hemp sort of down to my right, right hand side here. And we'll sort of see what comes of that. This rig is dead depth. Olivet. 50 centimetres from the hook. A few droppers. I don't know where the hell this rig comes from. All I've got is pinkies. I haven't got any maggots today. So. Let's try a single pinky to start with. Got to catch a bleak on the way out. Nope. Okay. I'll drop that in, let it settle, see what happens. See what this flow's like. I think I might even have to put my umbrella up just to get a bit of shade. supposed to be fairly cloudy but it ain't it's one thing I've noticed down here is the fish sometimes don't react very well to uh, Bright sun. I've had a bite, so promising. Fishing at nine meters. And got me to the bottom of the shelf there. bites and missed them and wondered what they were. I think what I'll do is I'll start loose feeding uh, if I don't start catching roach in the next half an hour or so. Just another bite. Probably gudgeon. Just sort of teasing it through, and then when I get a, an indication from a fish, I'm just slowing it down. First things first, I'm sticking the umbrella up because I'm getting bloody hot. Put a smaller hook on. Alright, let's have a look. Stick one of these size 20s on. It's a bit more 
more suited to a single pinky. Oh, that's roach. I went mad that one. Nice fish in this, quite gentle. Quite a few disgorged jobs, so I'm just going to shallow up a tad. So two inches. And tweak that bottom shot down as well. It's come off.
hopefully we'll see those bites a bit quicker hook them properly Bloody pike on. Just fishing a bit of wheat then. Had a better fish on there and the pike grabbed it. I'm loose feeding pinkies, which is attracting bleak. I'm fishing wheat to avoid the bleak. Actually catching nice roach on it, so I'm wondering whether to convert the swim into a, a wheat swim. I'll basically just pot out a half pint of wheat and hemp. I think it would do it any harm. I can still hedge my bets a bit, keep flicking a few pinkies out there. Quality fish as well on the wheat, no doubt about that. Oh, I hooked himself, good old boy. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, well, I've fed. Two pots of wheat and a pot of hemp. Now I'm about to set up a new rig because I've buggered my other one up. I'm just kind of getting back into it now. Currently about nine inches off the bottom. But I think the fish might be even higher up than that. I say, potting that feed in wasn't the miracle cure I thought it was going to be. So far.
that's oh, it's been a bit odd. Catching on everything, but not catching well on anything. At the moment. First skimmer I've caught. I just caught a couple of perch as well. Catching on wheat, catching on pinky, catching on tears, but nothing's nothing's really doing the business. I think part of it is there just aren't tons of fish out in front of me. And like down by the bridge, I mean that, that, that was clearly solid down there. There's, there's, there's just fewer fish here. There's, there are plenty of fish here, but there's just not as many. Not enough fish out there to make that whip pay off.
pike. Right, so this is the underwater. As you can see, I've got got the camera right in front of a couple of balls of ground bait here. Now I would have expected the roach to be in there ripping that to shreds, but they're not. They're kind of hanging back a bit, but the perch seem a lot more interested in it. Funnily enough, the, per the perch, they don't seem camera shy, they, they almost seem attracted to it. As soon as you put the camera down there, they're, they're there. It's like they're the, the sort of bumping noise the little rake I've got it attached to um, attracts them. Whereas the roach always seem to hang back. It'd be nice to see up a little bit more. So I think a lot of the roach were up higher, intercepting loose feed as it was coming down rather than feeding on the ground bait. A couple had a bit of a peck there. Might even see a little skin or something in a minute. Yeah, there's one. There are, there are an odd few skimmers down there. I, I, was ex I thought it might be a bit silty in this swim. Um, there's a little skimmer. And I was going to catch a few more skimmers. I know a, a, a little bit further up from where I was fishing it, it is quite muddy. Um, but here it's it's proper clean, hard gravel, so it's not perhaps it's not ideal skimmer temp territory. And it's surprising actually how clean the bed is. Um, not just here, but in the in the main Thames as well. And that's like the winter floods are flushing it all out. Little skimmer there, look. It's these these perch that seem to they seem to know that there's pinkies in the ground bait and they just Every once in a while we'll have a dig at it and pick the pinkies out. Fascinating. 
I'd love to see him. Like a pike come through, or a bream, or an eel, or something like that, just to see what happens. Unfortunately, I haven't caught anything like that yet. It's mainly been flamboyant perch. And I dare say, if you stuck a worm on, You'd catch those, however many there is, probably three or four perch down there. One after the other. Bam, bam, bam. The other, uh, the other week when I was on the Thames, a guy gave me some maggots. I was hemp fishing and not catching anything and this guy was going home and he gave me his maggots. So I put about eight balls of maggot-based ground bait in and then just fished double maggot on the bottom and I was just pulled out about 15 decent perch one after the other and then after I'd caught all the perch I started catching roach so you the truth I'm kind of been going through the motions today with this. I should have just stuck at one method and plugged away at it and got my head down rather than buggering about with this, that and the other. Coming up, fish will spook all of a sudden. There we go. Wham! Something happened there. It doesn't take long for them to gather back in. Now, that, the amount of wash there, that suggests to me that that was like a, a predator strike. But see how quickly they're mopping up all the bits and bobs.
found that, that quite interesting. I mean, it's sort of 12 foot deep here, so it's very limited how far you can see, which is a shame. I'd love to be able to see, you know, two meters or something. That'd just be amazing. It seems to me as though the roach backed off the main bed of feed by around about 50 centimeters or so. They're just kind of mainly in that murk. perch again. Well that one almost didn't make it off the cutting room floor. I, uh, I had a function on this camera where you could run it off a power pack but that obviously um, was one function that didn't survive its drowning the other week. Um, um, I have bought a new microphone, which is a similar one, but a compact and battery-free one. So that's quite good, and it was a lot cheaper than my old one. So hopefully the sound is good. Um, ah, yeah, and I've also I, I bought a, a dummy battery now that your battery pack basically plugs into. So that gets around the problem of... Uh, of running out of battery which is what happened at the end of the last video I, I packed up fishing pulled the net out thought I was recording everything turned out I wasn't recording <laughs> wasn't recording anything because I didn't have any battery um, <clears throat> yeah very funny old session that one uh, I felt like I would messed around way too much I ended up with about eight, eight or nine pounds or something um, And I, I, I mucked around trying the whip, trying the wheat, trying the pinky. And if I just stuck to my guns on one thing um, and fished, with my, got my head down, if you, if you know what I mean, and, and just fished, um, it would have gone a lot more smoothly. But I was. Um, I've got a tendency to kind of um, chop and change when I'm pleasure fishing, just try, try and find the, the magic bullet, if you like. And uh, it often pays off, but often doesn't. So um, when I'm fishing with, with sort of friends, it's a little bit more competitive. <laughs> so I'm a little bit more focused with what I'm doing. Uh, what was on my own that day, so... Uh, I hope you liked it. The, the the underwater footage there was uh, worth a look, despite the first one being an abject failure. Uh, I had the camera sort of pointing upwards and, and sort of outwards into the swim, and I thought it would catch all the goings on, but it, pfft, I don't know where the heck it was actually facing, but it wasn't showing anything at all really just one perch sort of swam across the top of the the frame at the beginning and the roach at the end of it and all the rest of it was just like this yellow murk so um i've no idea quite where that was going and obviously the second camera was was on a on a tilt that's something i might look into addressing actually at the moment I'm using a, a little rake but the, the pegs of the camera um, do mean it, it can potentially tilt um, so I think a straight bar uh, like a T-bar 
or maybe an L-shaped bar of some sort that I can screw the camera onto. I don't know if that will work actually. I'll have to think my way around it. But yeah, you want it to be a flat thing, don't you? So it settles on the bottom and just does what you want. Um, but yeah, the, the, the underwater footage was interesting and uh, it was a it was reasonable day's fishing. It was very blooming hot and I kind of got a bit fed up and packed up early in the end. Um, but I think it's worth putting out, I think it's worth salvaging, so um hope you liked it. Um, try and get back out on the bank again, maybe this week. Um, I'm going to go bass fishing this weekend on a, on a guided boat down in Brighton, weather permitting. Um, has been called into question, so... We shall see on that one. I don't think I'm going to film on that. It's, it's too sketchy. On a boat. My camera will fall overboard. It'll be a pain in the ass. And because it's a, a guided um, session that you know we're paying for, I'd, I want to take full advantage of that rather than trying to make a video of it. Um, so I'll get back and try and make a few. Next few videos are probably going to be on the river. Um, it's, it's a little difficult because there's a little bit more colour. I might do some underwater filming where I'm not fishing actually. I've got some little spots in the edge where I can just sort of shove a GoPro on a bank stick and throw a bit of bait down there and we can just just watch the fish and see what they do you know um, and I think that'll be all for now and um, I shall see you soon so thanks for watching cheerio